and just be able to feel that spirit move as it goes through the house. Father, we just ask you to bless the brother that stands before us for the Lord. God, if they be a lost one here, Lord, we just ask him to feel, just fill him up, Lord, that he might be able to reach that lost soul. God bless the preaching, the praying, the singing, the fellowship, everything that's done, dear God. Would you bless us? Lord, you may get the glory out of us, Lord. God, we just want to thank you again for what you do for us. Thank you for the love and the mercy, God. We thank you for that amazing grace. In Jesus' name we ask it all. Amen. Amen. Can you sing number three? Can you sing number three?
Dr. Kopp is here with us. We'll let him come sing after this book. Sing for us. And uh, it's real good to see Sister Bonnie. It's been a while since I've been in service with her. And so thankful for her. So you all come and say, My little we're here today. We're thankful for you. <clears throat> Seen more Every of. Day. He blesses me more. <coughs> yeah. 
rise and shine. There's a new day dawning. Thank the Lord. The voice that you hear is your soul calling. Don't wait till tomorrow. The Lord knows it's time to rise and shine. Rise and shine <clears throat> when night falls around you and the door closes in. You can't find the answer and you can't see the end. <coughs> Just look to the east, the lights break. Morning has broken, all things are made new, and rise and shine, there's a new day dawning, the voice that you hear is your soul calling, don't wait till tomorrow, the Lord knows it's time to rise and shine, rise and shine, to rise and shine, rise and shine. Amen. Thank the Lord. <laughs> Take a moment and choose God's love divine. From the moment you're saved, how happy you'll be. Take a moment and live eternally. I'm so glad that I know sweet peace and pardon. Wheresoever I go, I'm glad to say, my soul will fly over Chile, Jordan, over Jordan, on wings of love, I'll fly away, not a moment to lose, help your mind, take a moment and change, God's love divine, from the moment you're saved, how happy you'll be. Take a moment and leave eternally. Oh, the river is wide and rough the water, but the Savior will come for me someday. My soul will fly over Chile, Jordan, over Jordan, on wings of love. Take a moment and change God's love divine. From the moment you say, how happy you'll be. Take a moment and eternally. Amen. Put Sister Linda to work there. <coughs>
Thank you, Lord.
the one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land, what a day, glorious day. still see that vision, and that was, I believe that was a blessing by God, a kind of a reward for coming out that night, and uh, we, we cherish those things, Brother Bruce, that yeah, God gives us, it's not every day that we feel the power of God in our lives, it's not every day that we feel His hand come down from heaven, have you ever prayed to God and just felt a door open up and it feels like you're just right next to God, have you ever talked to God, church, and actually as if He was just right in front of you, felt Him, it's not always that way, sometimes it feels like you can't feel God at all. But every now and then you get a real close touch of God like that because he's real. He's in the lives of his people. That's why the Bible calls this a kingdom. That's why it calls it the kingdom of God. It's not just a, a congregation. The word church, it means congregation, Brother Sanford, ecclesia or ecclesia in the Greek language. It was a political term. It referred to the freedmen of a Greek city-state who would gather right. out and they were all equal in the, in the eyes of one another, Brother James. And they started to use it. The Jews didn't use that term. They used the term synagogue. But they started to use that Greek term in Ecclesia or Ecclesia because it was a congregation. You know what? We're all free in the eyes of God. Amen. The Bible speaks about that. It says where the Spirit of God is, there is liberty. And he was writing to a Greek audience. They understood these things. He said where the Spirit of God is, there's liberty, and the Lord is that Spirit. Absolutely. And Jesus even said to a woman one time that the time, he says, the time has passed for people to be arguing over different places of worship and different methods of worship. And in John, maybe this chapter 4, Jesus was talking to that, that woman at the well, the well of Samaria, the Samaritan woman. And the Bible says that she spoke to Jesus and she said, Our fathers say that we should worship in this mountain. And your fathers say that you should worship in this mountain. At this time period, the temple of God was in Jerusalem, which is also known as Mount Zion, and the temple of the Samaritan people. They didn't have a temple anymore. It had been destroyed about 200 years prior by the Jews, by a man by the name of Judas Maccabeus. Uh, but it had been on a mountain called Mount Gerizim. And they had their own temple there. And these two people butted heads and they argued over it. Uh, for hundreds of years, they argued over the right way to worship God. Uh, and this woman meets Jesus and she didn't know everything, but she knew that he was a man of God. Uh, for she said, I perceive, sir, that thou art a prophet. Uh, and the Bible says that she asked him this question. She says, hey, uh, our fathers say to worship in this mountain. Your fathers say to worship here. We say Mount Gerizim, you say Zion, but what say you? And Jesus looked at her and said, woman, I tell you, the time is coming and the time already is that the true worshipers of God shall worship not in this mountain, not over here, but in spirit and in Amen. truth. For God is a spirit and he seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit church. He does not have a body the way that you and I have, but he is invisible to this world. This world looks for evidence, Brother James, that God exists, but they will never find it. I think of the scripture that Brother Tommy quoted Friday night when he said that Christ dwells in the 
the light that no man can approach unto. Hey, we're building rockets to go to Mars, Brother Bruce, but no matter what they do, they'll never be able to get into that light that Christ dwells in. It is not of this world, but it is of another world and Amen. another realm. You can call it supernatural if you want to. You can call it divine, but there is a genuine, real power that God has, that He is a spirit, and He dwells in a place that we cannot reach, Brother James. I can read about the Apostle Paul writing to that same church in the book of Corinthians whenever he said that he was stoned half to death and nearly died, I believe it was, and that he beheld a vision of the third heaven, the one where Christ now sits, where he dwells on the right hand of God, and he saw it, Brother Bruce, and it was glorious, and he was trying to explain just to the church just how glorious it was, but he couldn't get everything across. The light that Christ dwells in is too great for you and I to comprehend. It's too great for us to understand. It is too great for us to see. And the sinner people don't even understand that it's real, Brother James. We see in part the book of Corinthians says, we see through a glass or a mirror. We see through it darkly. We have our vision dimmed, Brother Bruce, by these natural bodies. We don't understand everything there is to know, Brother Sanford, but we get bits and pieces here through the Spirit of God that comes down into our hearts. He is real and He's tangible. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews that faith does it say that it's a blind belief. It says that faith is the substance of things hoped for Amen. the evidence of things not seen. Substance is something you can hold, brother. That's right. God means evidence is something that you can know. You can know the truth of God. You can know that He's real when you have Him dwelling down on the inside. That Spirit of God, that God is a Spirit. He has been working in the lives of people for a very, very long time. Think about all the times throughout the Bible when it says, and the Spirit of God came unto Jeremiah, and the Spirit of God came to Isaiah, and the Spirit of God came to so and so. The Spirit of God has always been working in the lives of people, men and right. women who served Him. It wasn't always available in the fullness, Brother Sanford, like we have it now, but it was always here in the world. He was always visiting people that loved Him and served Him. He was always trying to help people, even if it was rare. He was always there. But you know what the Bible says? It calls it the Spirit of God, but in the New Testament in one place, it says that it was the Spirit of Christ and those prophets. Now you might say, how was it the Spirit of God if it was the Spirit of Christ? But do you not know that Christ is God? The book of John says in chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning was the Word of God, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That Word was Jesus Christ, the Bible says, and by that Word, all things were created by that Word, Amen. and for that Word, Jesus made everything. He was the Word. A Word is something you speak, is it not? Well, Genesis says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and it says, He said, let there be light, and there was light. Who do you think made that light, Brother Bruce? It was Jesus making the light. God declared he wanted it done. The Father wanted it done. But it was Jesus who made that light. That's God right. wanted the world to bring forth the animals, but it was Jesus who brought them forth. God wanted things to be made, but it was Jesus that executed upon the Father's will. And do you know the same thing happened in the New Testament? Jesus said, I speak not of myself, but everything that I say is because the Father told me to say it. Everything I do is because the Father told me and gave it to me to do. He even told them, he said, they asked to see God one time. They wanted to see the Father. And Jesus said, if you have seen me, you seen have the seen the Father. For I do his words and I do declare his name. The Father wanted Jesus to come and he 
you wanted Jesus to die for our sins. And just like in the beginning when God the Father wanted something done and the Word of God did it, when it came time to the New Testament, God wanted His Son to come and die and Jesus did it. He could have turned back. He even said before He died that I have power to call more than 12 legions of angels to come deliver me from this cross. That's a lot of angels, Brother James. A legion could be anywhere from two to 10,000 soldiers, depending on the time in history. That's a lot of angels. He said more than 12 legions of angels. A Roman legion was something to be feared. When a legion of Roman soldiers came into your city, you knew that you better shape up. Those were some tough boys right there, Brother James. And that's why he said that, because he was saying that his power was so much more great and so much more beyond anything that they could have. And also, whenever he was standing before Pilate, the judge, the governor of that Roman Judea province right there, he looked at him and he said, don't you know that I have power to release you and that I have power to crucify you? And Jesus looked at him and he said, you could have no power whatsoever except my Father which is in heaven You're give right. it to you. You know it's still the same today, church. No one Amen. has any power except what God gives them. Amen. I know we've got governors, we've got leaders, we've got presidents. There's men in this world and women who are in high positions of power. What does the Bible say about that? It says in Romans that the powers that be are subject and are put there by God. He is able to put people in places of power and he is still able to remove them from power. Amen. But what's he told us to do? He's told us to submit to rulers. He's told us to honor the king. Uh, the book of Proverbs says to honor the king. That can be hard sometimes. There's some incompetence sometimes we see in high positions. But he's told us to pray for them. Uh, to pray for them that they might be able to what? Give us a peaceable and a quiet life. God loves us here today, and he wants us to be prosperous Absolutely. in his salvation. Amen. He wants us to be working for him, Brother Chris. He wants us to have that spirit of God that he sent into this world, and he's been sitting for a long time, but that when Christ came and after Christ died, he started to send that spirit in full force. We, we're not going to get into it all, but on that day of Pentecost, when that spirit of God came down, the church was established for the first time, the fullness of God's salvation, as much as it is ever we're going to be in this world has been here ever since then. Uh, there's going to be more in heaven, Brother Bruce. We're going to have more blessings in heaven. We're going to have more of God's Spirit, more of God in heaven. But as far as much as we can get it now, we have that right now. Uh, that Holy Spirit came down to them on that day, uh, and from that time forth they began to preach Jesus and Him crucified. Uh, and over the book of Acts, they slowly spread out to the whole world. Uh, and within 30 years, the entire known world had been preached Jesus and today we're still preaching Jesus brother Adam nothing has changed there's no new prophecies to be fulfilled but we have that same spirit of God that's inside of us and we don't worship in this mountain or over here we don't worship in this church or over this church we don't worship in this association or in this free will or in this independent but we worship God in spirit and in truth, that's Lord's Amen. spirit. That's not God's spirit. We worship in our spirit. That's the right. Apostle Paul said, I serve God with my spirit. Yep. And when our spirit serves God, it's right there with God's spirit right. working together. Amen. With God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So Sanford, I'd like for you, Sister Amanda, to come sing a song for us. And while they sing, let's all move around, fellowship one with another. We'll be going to prayer here in just a little bit. Thankful for what we've been listening to here this morning. It's been a good place to be up to this point. <coughs> we come back in a little bit late, but boy, I sure am glad we're here. Yeah. It's good to see everybody. Thank you, brother. We've kind of been under the weather a little bit and had voices. <laughs> We'll do the best we can for the glory of God.
see all of you. We're thankful for you. We're glad you've come out this morning. We hope you feel welcome while you're here with us. We've already heard enough gospel to save this world if they would listen to it. And God loves you this morning. He's manifested that through His Son and what He's done on the cross. And I'm thankful for that. And you ought to be too. We're glad to see you this morning. We're getting ready to go to prayer. If you've got an unspoken request, you'd like to have an interest in this prayer. God bless. You may have a spoken request here today. Josh's wife just had a baby that had a C-section, so remember her. She's doing good. Sister Shirley Williams, I'm glad you can remember her. Remember my mother-in-law, my wife, and my boys. Brother Tony, I'd like the church to remember us, our children, grandbabies. I want you to know it's so good. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.
last night, several requests, Friday night, several, a lot of unsaved mentioned, let's not forget those. I continue praying for this service this morning, and the Lord will use it, help each other as we go along through prayer, and the Lord will come along and just give us what we need here today. Amen. He's able to. Don't forget Sister Darlene, most of you know she had a, a bad fall this week, I think they're moving her to rehab if they haven't already. Thank her. Also, Brother Jakey, he's still recovering from some surgery, too. Remember them. A lot of sickness around us. Always remember me and mine, and let's remember the Tomlin family now, Paul's chapel. Yeah. And Brother Jake called me this morning. They had moved Darlene up there. used to be health south. So they was having time keeping her in the bed, but when she was in her medicine, I guess, too. You know? And he said, don't forget that. got a card here from Sister Carol Nelson thanking us for the fruit and the candy that was in the basket. Appreciate it so very much. Please tell the church and send, send a thank you to them also. Let's not forget her. All those other shut-ins that we were able to visit and be with during that time, I'm sure they, they enjoyed it. I know they did. It was probably just about as much a blessing to us being able to be with them and see them rejoice as it was for them for us to be there. And, uh, so let's not forget all of our shows. We have several not able to get out. Anybody else before we go to prayer? If not, everybody that's able, will, let's go down. Uh, we got Brother Chris Rowland with us from Pensacola this morning. He asked to see it, but I'd like for him if he would come around and lead us in prayer. If you would, Brother Chris, come around. Let's all go to the Lord in prayer. And, just everybody pray when the Lord will lead us. Dear gracious and loving Heavenly Father, Thank Lord you, God, Lord, for God, God, it's once again, Master, that we bow down before you here and here this side of the earth, God. Lord, we thank you, God, that you allowed us to lay down last night, that you blessed us to wake from our sleep once again another day, God. Lord God, we thank you for allowing us to gather out here this morning. We have to set aside the congregation God right here. And we thank you for what we've already felt, God, down in our hearts here this morning. Lord, we truly felt the spirit among us today, God. And we thank you for that. We thank you for the songs of Zion that have been sung here. And the Lord is your brother, God, that has come from, that has come from above. Lord, thank you for the message that's coming out. We continue to pray, God, for the brethren that have come, that you would bless them, God, to be able to, Lord, to stand and preach your gospel, Lord God, today to this congregation, that the sheep may be fed, God, and that if there be any unsaved among us, Lord God, they would take heed this morning to the warning that will go out, Father. However, we know, God, that we truly are growing closer, God, to the end, God, that uh, we know, Lord, we didn't come here to stay always, Lord, but just a short time, and then uh, the, the death would come for us, God, and we thank you, Lord. Lord, that for ourselves in the 18th year of our life, we met a man called Jesus. Lord, we thank you for that. Uh, we thank you, God, today that we can stand uh, among this world, God, and we're in this world, God, but we're separated from it. Nevertheless, God, uh, for we have a connection through by your Son this morning, God, we thank you for that. And now, God, we pray for the sick and the shut-ins, God, those that are not able to be out today, Lord, that I have you upon their hearts this morning, God, that if they could, they would be out amongst their, uh, your people today. God, would you bless them? Uh, the orphans, God, the widows, the shut-in, uh, those in the hospitals and the nursing homes today, God, uh, that stand in the need of prayer, God, that only you're able, uh, they stand in the need of a touch that only you can give. Lord, would you do so this morning? Uh, so much in our life to pray for, God. We thank you for the blessings of life. Uh, we thank you, God, for food upon our tables, a uh, roof above our heads, God. Uh, but above all those things, we thank you for salvation uh, through and by our loving Savior, God. We thank you for that, uh, that your son came willingly uh, and that he died.
died for us. And though we were yet sinners, uh, uh, we may live again, God, when this life ends. Uh, though we know, God, this isn't the end. Uh, though we know what awaits us when this life comes to an end, God. Now, thank you, Father, for so many, uh, for the blessings that you bestowed upon us. Uh, uh, thank you that we feel you once again in our heart and our life today, God. Now, bless the brethren here, God. Continue to bless this little uh, Salem church, God. We thank you, Lord, that each time we've been here, uh, we've been made to feel welcome, Lord, and we felt you here, God. Bless this congregation, this number, this community, God, that they would look about and see this, this little church here, God, laboring and prospering and standing for you, God. We know the time is drawing nigh. We pray our people would take heed, Lord, for the time will come, God, whenever we must give account, we must give an answer, God, for who we say you are. I'm thankful that I can say you are my Savior, God. In Jesus' precious name, bless you, brother, God. Thank you. Thank you again, God. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, we pray. Amen. Amen. God's awful good to us. It seems we do so little for Him. It's good that we've gathered here today. I hope we don't take this lightly. How important the brother has already said this is for us to gather here today. Because our people, God's people, gather, gathering in this capacity, in this manner, we get strength. Yeah. We help each other as we gather and we sing and begin to mind the good spirit of the Lord. And I hope that's what we've done here today is mind the Him. We can awful easily get wrapped up in just doing what I want or what somebody else has asked us to do. Whether it's singing a song or saying this or saying that, it's, it's easy to get wrapped up in what we want. We ought to be mindful of the Spirit and be tuned in to His Spirit that we can be able to give Him glory as we've gathered Him. As we said Friday night, I hope as we've prayed here already today, we've been in touch with Him because I felt His Spirit here this morning. I hope that when we prayed that that wasn't the only time we prayed today. We were reminded Friday night of how the old brothers and sisters used to gather and they'd come in the house rejoicing, come in the house singing, come in the house praising God. And uh, they came ready for church. It seems like anymore, by the time we dismiss, we just then got in a mood and in a, in a pattern in our mind that we're then just ready to start worshiping. When we ought to start long before we walk through those doors and get ready for church. You know what the old devil loves, as I say so often, to distract us and get our mind here and get it there. But if we're not real careful, he'll rob us of a lot of blessings in our life. He doesn't like for us to feel what we felt here this morning. He doesn't like for us to even be here. He'll try his best to keep us from coming. He'll try his best to keep us from getting the, the most that we can out of this service. He'll try his best while we're here to distract us from hearing what else is, else is going to be said or done in this service today. And I don't like him. He's, he's, a, he's a, a deceiver. He's our adversary. But we got to know how he operates. we got to know how he works. And I thank my God that no matter what may come around us, that we can still give him praise and glory. I want to read a little bit this morning in the book of Habakkuk. I don't know that I've ever preached anything out of this book or not. I may have touched on it a little bit, but it's not very long. Only about three chapters in the Old Testament. The prophet of God that the Lord began to raise up there. And uh, as he, he began to use him as... Uh, his, his name, Habakkuk, even means it's an embracer or he's a wrestler. And as you start reading about what's going on, you're going to find some dialogue going on through this chapter, through chapter 1 and chapter 2 up to chapter 3. It's some dialogue and conversation going on between Habakkuk and going on what the Lord is going to reply to him as he begins to talk to him. And uh, we can learn a whole lot about what God wants for us to do. And he, he wants to talk to us like we find him talking to Habakkuk here. And we ought to have a desire as he talked to him to want to talk to God too. Right. Now he's not going to come along and start talking to you in an audible voice like I'm speaking to you today. 
Or how that you may in an audible voice talk to God. He can hear your mind. You don't even have to speak with an audible voice. But he, he's, a, he's a God that has chosen. Did you hear what the brother preached to you just a few minutes ago about the Word? How that the Word, Jesus Christ, who was the Word, has been right there all along. And his Word is able to speak to men and women. And this book right here that he has chosen, this is the living Word of God. Yep. And when it is, begins to be spoken and begins to be recited or begins to be told to the people with the Spirit of God being mixed with it, there's a power and a witness about that that far exceeds any story or anything that we can read or anything we can hear in this world. It's incomparable to what this world may try to offer with stories and things. I could stand here and tell you some stories, no doubt, and there's probably some preachers that would stand here and tell you stories that can start drawing at your emotions and start pulling at your heartstrings and may even cause you to have a little bit of emotion and start crying with the stories that we could tell you and begin to pull in that manner. But God has chosen the word and when that word is spoken in the power and the demonstration of the Holy Spirit of God, it's able to go into the lives of men and women who are unsaved and convict them and draw them. It's able to go into the lives of men and women that are Christians and begin to uh, uh, encourage them and, and rebuke them and exhort them and do the things that we need here this morning. And he's able to accomplish through his word as we cast it upon the water and as it begins to go forth, he's promised us that if his word is spoken, that it will not return unto him void, that it will accomplish what that he has sent it to do. We may never know altogether the effects of the word when it is spoken out there in this world and what it might accomplish in individual lives right here or just as we spoke here Friday night if we can just testify or just say the name of Jesus and how powerful that name is as a, just a Christian as you testify of the goodness of God or begin to speak of the sweet name of Jesus that there is power in just that word that can reach individuals it's not all together in all the vocabulary as Paul said I came not to you with excellency of speech or of wisdom of men's words that's not all together what it takes today it don't take a, a big college degree or it don't take a big education to begin to expound upon the mercies and the good word of God. But Amen. as we begin to see the name of Jesus when it is spoken, not just coming and rehearsing a story. If we're not real careful, as I spoke about a while ago, of rehearsing stories, pulling at your heartstrings, if we're not real careful as we stand where we are today, we'll just catch ourselves uh, just rehearsing an old story out of the Bible and not apply it. You know what Paul told Timothy to do? He said, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, rebuke, reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Doctrine is teaching, and he tells us to rightly divide the word of truth, that we can apply these stories that we can read up, not just rehearse the story or tell you about the story. I know there's power in just reading his name, and he re reminds us in the New Testament to read these names or these words or these letters that they would be strength to us, but there's power in it when we apply it to our life today. This isn't some history story. This isn't something that happened just a hundred years ago for their benefit, but it's for me and you today and our benefit that we can apply it to our life and begin to gain strength from that. And I hope that's what we can look at when we start looking at what Habakkuk began to speak in his dialogue unto the Lord. So he started wrestling with the Lord. We've heard about Jacob, how that he wrestled with the Lord there that day. And as we find that he was there in the night and it was in the darkness and the, the angel began to come down to him and began to speak to him and began to grab a hold of him and they wrestled there in the night time and he began to have a desire that that angel would give him a blessing and he said, I'm not going to let you go until you give me a blessing and he kept hanging on and he kept wrestling with that angel and that angel asked, he said, what's your name? And he told him what his name was. He said, your name's not not going to be that anymore, but it's going to be Israel from this day forth. And they continued wrestling until the sun began to pop up over the horizon and the light began to shine there in that land. And you know what? That angel began to grab the hollow of Jacob's tie through his hip out of socket 
and he gave him a blessing and turned him loose. And when he got done with that wrestling match there, he had a new name. Uh, bless God, he never walked the same way again because uh, he had a limp from that day forward. And praise God forevermore. Uh, he got the blessing from that angel there that day. From God, from up above, from his messenger. You know what an angel is? An angel is a messenger. What we've heard here this morning as the gospel began to go out uh, is the message from heaven's country that can give us strength. Uh, it's God's word and it's just as binding as if my Lord was standing right here today uh, speaking in his literal audible voice unto us uh, to give us strength, to give us encouragement, to convict us of our sin and help us as we go on our journey here in this life. So as he begins to speak to these folks here, he <coughs> first of all wanted to warn these people, Judah, of what was about to take place of the coming judgment of the hand of those Chaldeans or Babylon, if you will, that was about to come their way. And he also wanted to comfort them because of what was about to come their way. Yeah, they were going to have destruction, but he wanted to give them a little bit of encouragement through all that was about to come their way, through all the problems that they were about to see. And as he talked to them there, he reminded them, did you hear what the brother said about faith just a few minutes ago? Uh, how that it's the substance of things not seen. Uh, and by it, those elders obtained a good report. Uh, this old brother began to speak there as he was talking, God speaking to him. And he reminded him, but the just shall live by faith. Did you think that was only in the New Testament? This writer I began to write that down in the second book. They had to walk by faith. The just are to walk by faith and not by sight. If we just look on the natural things, on the carnality of this life, it's going to fail us. Amen. If we begin to look where God wants us to look today, we'll be able to overcome whatever obstacle that it may be. And as he was speaking to them there, we find the dialogue of uh, this prophet of God speaking to God and God speaking to him. And God got pretty plain with him and told him about the judgment that was about to come upon those people, how that the enemy was going to come their way and began to pull them down because of their disobedience. And as he began to start out in chapter 3 of this book, it began to become a song unto the Lord, a prayer, if you will, unto the Lord, and he would praise him. And as the writer began to speak through chapter 3, he started talking to God and thanking him for the time as he looked back at what they'd done back there when he led those children out of bondage when they were led across that sea dry shod and he started praising God for how the deliverance came to them and he began to look to the time that Moses was up on that mountain and began to praise God for the word of God that came down on that mountain and how that the light began to shine so brightly and the rays and the light of God that began to shine unto the people if you remember that God's began to shine so Himself to Moses, and Moses then had to wear a veil Amen. over his face because he'd been in the presence of God, and his light began to shine so brightly upon Moses that he had to veil his face because of it. And I want you all to know that wasn't just written for Moses alone, but it was written for me and you as well. That when we get in the presence of God, that there's going to be a light that begins to shine upon on us and if we will allow him to come into us then we can also bear that light unto others as we go along as that city that's built upon a hill that cannot be hid so allow that light to so shine before me and I thank God for that light that is upward drawing that's able to pull men and women from a field of sin and place them in the church of the living God here upon this earth if they will allow it to put them where that they need to be. And so as he began to speak here and talk to them about what was going on and praising God in this song of chapter 3 and to God for everything that he'd done and been to get be able to deliver them. And he came down and started wrapping up or winding up this song if you will. And he started in verse 17 of chapter 3 and he said
said this, although, uh, you see, there's a lot of all those in our life. Uh, although sickness, uh, although of death, uh, although of problems that may come our way. Listen to what he says here. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines. The labor of the olive shall fail, and the field shall yield no meat or no food. <coughs> the flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Yet, all of all this going on, and this old prophet said, although that's happening, although it's looking bleak, although it looks like there's death everywhere around it, Yet he said, I will rejoice in the Lord. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. And he will make my feet like hind's feet. And he will make me to walk upon my high places. And as he began to speak about this, I began to be reminded of our life. I know it gets sometimes it seems that we're just going along on our own. Have you ever felt that you're so far away from God or that you're so far away from God's people? And it may seem like there's nothing around us. He spoke there of that the blossom, that the fig tree shall not blossom. Neither shall fruit be in the vines. And as we begin to go on our way, you know what a blossom and a fruit tree tree does. And that blossom, if it begins to bloom out in the springtime, and we get a hard frost that comes, Brother Sanford, what happens to that fruit for that season? It's not going to have any fruit upon it. Why? Because that frost or that hard freeze killed the blossoms or the blooms and that was upon that tree. And that year is not going to have any fruit come upon that. And as we begin to look around and see our people that's around us. If we're not real careful, we'll allow the coldness of sin and the darkness of this world to begin to hinder the fruit in my life and yours. And we don't want your life and your fruit to be frostbitten. But if we're not careful when that does take place and we look around at our brothers and sisters and it seems like there's no fruit going on on, because of sin in their life. And yet we still should and go right on ourselves regardless of what's going on around us and allow the warmth of God and the sun shining in our life of God's warmth of His Holy Spirit and to begin to give us what we need to bear that fruit in this world. And He spoke of that vine. You know what that is? Jesus made it clear what that was. He let us know, I am the vine, and ye are the branches. So let's abide in him so that we can bring forth fruit. And if that doesn't bring forth fruit, you know what's going to happen? He said, I will purge it that it might bring forth more fruit. I'm thankful of every time he's had to come by and purge me a little bit. I'm thankful because he did today. I can't bear anything in myself. That branch that's there, if it wasn't connected to that vine, where that saps are flowing, where that vine's connected to the ground to get the nutrients and the water and everything that it needs to begin to flow up through that vine uh, into those branches that are around it. I've uh, been my friend today. We won't have uh, any fruit in our lives. We'll just dry up. Uh, and I'm afraid today as we look around uh, at our people without a desire uh, to blossom, without a desire uh, to bring forth I thought of the man Isaiah uh, as he began to speak one time of Israel. Uh, and he prophesied about a time to come. He said there will be a barren place, a dry desert land in the chapter 35 of Isaiah. He said that barren, dry place of a desert shall begin to flow with water. Bless God, I'm thankful today that my soul was barren, that my soul was dry. But I thank 
God, when the Spirit of God I began to flow into my life. Did you hear that brother talking about I, the woman at the well, I, that living water? I, I, hey, we can have that. A well of living water I, I springing up on the inside of us. I, I, an everlasting life. Amen. <coughs> Praise the Lord. Do we have that water flowing in us? Well, I hope we do. Because yeah. when it starts flowing, it'll allow those blooms to start getting all around. And then as time begins to go on, then that fruit will start being produced upon those limbs that's upon that tree if they haven't gotten too cold. If they haven't done the things. But you know what? Sometimes those limbs get awful thick and you got to go in and prune them back. Uh, it'll have little ribby apples all over it if you're not careful and get too many limbs on it. And he'll come in and start pruning it back. Uh, brothers and sisters, let's not spread ourselves too thin today. Uh, in ourself, if we have work to do, let's do it. Uh, and let's rely upon God uh, to take up the slack as we go forward to do our very best uh, that we know to do. And uh, he'll help us in uh, whatever area that it may be. If God is in the arrangement, uh, then we can over come. Amen. He began to speak there. When he spoke of that dry, barren land that was going to take place in the 35th chapter of Isaiah. And he said, Israel shall blossom as a rose. A beautiful rose shining forth. And if we're where God wants us to be in the church of the living God today, the true Israel of God that's here on this earth right now, a blessed God will bloom forth and will bring forth fruit and that's pleasing unto God and when he looks down and smiles upon us blessing us on our journey hey that fruit will be seen of this world and they'll see who we are so if you're not a Christian today my desire and more importantly God's desire for you today is that you get grafted in that olive tree and begin to produce fruit as he wants us to as we go forward and then he began to go on and he spoke of that olive he said the labor of the olive shall fail and the field shall yield no meat oh my God today if we go through our life and we're not bearing fruit you know what that olive is representative of they would take it to that press and they begin to put pressure upon it and squeeze those olives out and they would get the all of that olive. Yeah. He told them over in the book of Leviticus and even in Exodus when he first gave the commandment. He said you go and you get pure olive oil. Why? That you might put it in that lamp that was in that tabernacle later in the temple that it might shine Always, The book of Leviticus repeated the same thing and said that oil, get pure olive oil, put it in that vessel, that it may shine not always, but the same thing continually. Uh, you see, when we get the oil of gladness in our life, and uh, when we get the Spirit of God uh, poured upon us, uh, it's like that oil uh, that the writer of the oil uh, of gladness that the old man of God began to speak of, uh, that was poured upon of the head of that ran down upon the beard. I, I, even Aaron's beard and went right on down I, I, to the skirts of his garment. I, and there the Lord commanded the blessing. Yeah. That was the blessing. Even life evermore. <coughs> that if we have that spirit abiding in us, that oil of gladness in us as we go forward in this life. Hey, yeah, we may die naturally here in this life. But I thank God this morning that that second death, Brother Bruce, won't have any harm upon us. That we can be blessed of him. How about that second death that he spoke of, Brother Chris, many times in the scripture? How about it won't harm us? Why? How because we've already died out to sin. How we've already done all the dying that we need to do. And we are alive in Christ Jesus with the oil of gladness inside of us. And making us alive in Christ Jesus. What a blessing it is to know him as we move forward here. The field shall yield no food, no meat. Oh, if we're not living with the Spirit of God in us, we'll starve, spiritually starve to death. 
If we've not got the fruit upon us, if we're not blooming, if we're not yielding fruit, if we've not got the oil, that olive, right down in this vessel of ours to allow that light to shine, then there will be no food for His people. There will be a famine in our life. Not of meat, not of drink, but a famine of the spiritual Word of God. And there's times in our life that we may have to go through those things. And this man right here was going through and experiencing this. Not just naturally, but God had withdrew Himself from the children of Israel there and wasn't showing His presence to them. And He said, even though hey, there's no fruit in Israel, even though nobody's blooming for it, even though that spirit that this brother was talking about that dwelt upon those people back there, and we've got the fullness of right now, even though it's not there, yet I'm still going to praise God, even though there's nothing there for us to eat, and there's no food yet, I'm still going to praise God. We need to have that mind today. Whether it gets down to one or two of us, three or four, or we're feeling all alone in this world, let's still have the mind to praise God regardless of what's going on around us. And that's what he goes on and says here. The flock shall be cut off from the fold. Oh, how sad it would be today uh, if the flock if we're not with them, if we're, we gain our strength from gathering with you, and even though we're separated from you and may not be with you yet, I can still praise God. Yeah. And there's no herd in the stalls. You've heard me say many times, his sheep, we're his sheep today. I've come out to the barn here to get fed. What's he feeding us with? That holy manna that he's throwing out to us. But if it gets down to the point that there's no herd gathering out here, I'll still have to praise Him. Yet I'll still praise God. Yet I'll still allow the light to shine within me. Yet I'll still bring forth fruit that's pleasing unto God. Yet I'll still try to give you glory, God, for what you've done to me, although the circumstances that are around us. Hey, we may not see a literal famine in our land around us. We may not see literal death all around us today. Uh, but I'll tell you this, there's going to be some dry patches uh, that we're all going to have to go through. Uh, and I encourage us all, uh, when those dry patches come, I uh, still praise God. Uh, when the dry patches come, I uh, still read your Bibles. Uh, when the dry patches come, I uh, still lift up your hand uh, and thank God for what He has done in your life. Uh, regardless if the Spirit is overwhelming you or not, uh, when the Spirit of God God is dwelling in your life. I praise His name. I still raise your hand. Lift your voice and thank God. Although it may seem dry, I yet praise God for what that He's done. I will rejoice in the Lord, not in myself, not in somebody else. I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. A month ago, we talked in the book of John quite a bit about happiness and joy. There's a big difference in that. We cannot be happy and still have joy in our life. When troubles are around us, when there's no fruit around us, when we're not with the flock around us, when it seems everything's dry, we may not be too happy, but I thank God today I've got joy in this vessel of mine. And I can raise my hand and thank you, God, for what you've done. I am the presence of God. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Habakkuk said, you know what David said one time? Lord, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. He's where it comes from today. Without the source of that salvation, we'd all be lost in our sins. He's the source of it. Let's trust Him. It's by His grace we've got it today. Amen. Through that faith that we've obtained from Him and that gospel. And if we'll put it where it needs to be, He'll be there to help us. Why? Because the Lord's my strength. I can't do it by myself. You can't do it by yourself. 
If you're unsaved today, you can't live the way God expects you to live. None of us can. I've never been able to. I, these brothers and sisters that's labor I, in this church down through the many ages of time, I, we've heard my brothers and sisters talk about it. I, we heard Brother Chris on the radio I, this morning speak about how we look back I, to the labor of those old brothers and those old sisters. I referred to them a while ago and how they came through the doors. I, I rejoice Sing. But I can't today rely upon what that I remember of them. I can't feast from what they've done back there. I'm thankful for them. I'm thankful for their prayers, for their labor and that they established in this little local church and all of those that's around us. But today we have to take up our cross daily. We can't rely upon them and that carried their cross and bore the load of the people. It's time for me and you today to stand in the gap and begin to raise up his name and give him glory for what he's done for us. Praise the Lord. We need fresh bread in our days today. He's able to supply that. The Lord, he's my strength. That's where I get strength at. Yeah, I have to eat. This natural bread, this natural food, I got. if I don't eat it, I'm going to get weak. Yeah. But today, if we'll eat of that spiritual man, oh, we'll get strength every day. Yeah, yeah I look back to some meetings. I've been in, Brother James. Some good ones. We've had some revivals that's gone on week after week after week. Been in some services that seemed like the outpouring of God's Spirit was so thick upon us. As the brother began to speak while ago about God moving up in our lives and feel so close to him. That gives me a little strength as I go along thinking about that. Yeah, right. you know what? I need to look forward because there's coming Amen. a time that we'll be able to enjoy that in resurrected form one day after a while. I'll be able to put this right here to the side and praise him for everything that he's done for us. <coughs> God is my strength. He will make my feet like hind's feet. Like a deer. You ever see a deer yeah. jumping these fences and jumping these trees and bushes? Oh, bless God. He only, uh, just this writer spoke about him, and he spoke of a time that uh, we would be able to leap like a deer, eat, leap like a hind, and that we'd be able to go and rejoice and have the joy in our life that would cause us. You may be old and feeble here today and barely able to scoot your feet across the floor, uh, but I'm serving a God today uh, that's able spiritually to lift you up and uh, to give you strength, uh, just like that man there that had been all those days sitting there feeble. Uh, God spoke to him through his sermon. Uh, Jesus even spoke to a man one time. Uh, will you be made whole? Uh, oh, bless God, he got up and uh, never walked in his life stood leaping and praising God. He can make our feet strong today. He can guide our footsteps wherever we go. He can help us in our walk with God. That He'll be there. He's blazed the trail before us. And if we will follow after Him, and as Paul advised the church, and to follow Him, because He was following Christ, I find a good solid brother or sister. I get with with them, I pray with them, I walk with them, and you'll get strength from that. He's told us how to strengthen the feeble knees. I lift up those hands that are hanging low. As Moses stood over that great valley there, with his hands raised high, and they started getting tired. Yeah. Then we finally was there, and her came by, began to lift those arms up for him. They started being victorious because they were helping the man of God. We need help sometimes. Amen. You pray for God to help you. You where your help may come from. You may be sitting with them right here. That may be the help that God supplies you. He'll make you to leap and give you strength like a deer. You can jump and make me to walk upon my high places. Aren't you glad for those mountains, Brother James, we get on sometimes? You can't live up there. There's not much water on the mountaintop, but I'm so glad when he begins to bless me spiritually to get up on top there, and I'm able to go for a little while, and it feels like my feet's not even touching the ground. But oh, those valleys, we need to thank God for them too. Although we're going through a valley, and it seems it's so far around us, yet will I praise God. 
praise him on the mountain, and I'll praise him in the valley too. And he will make me to walk upon mine high places. I thank God for that. That old brother went through a whole lot there. Probably more than me and you will ever go through in this life. So what are we going to do? Just look at what he done. He kept right on praising God. He kept trusting in him. He looked to the God that was able to help him. He'll help you today too. You may be in the deepest valley of this Christian that you'll ever go through. God's able to help you. You may be in the deepest valley of a person that an individual can ever go through called sin. God's able to help you out of that too. If you'll listen to him, he can pull you from the field of darkness. And I'll put you in the church of the living God here upon this earth. I praise God for that. We're going to come to a close here. Uh, Brother Paul, I'd like for you all to come to another song at the close of the service here. While they sing, the church door is open. I don't know the mind of everybody here. But I'll tell you this, we've been praying for our unsaved. Whether you wanted us to or not, we've been praying for you. And I'd love to see you get concerned and get serious about your life. I'd love to see you get a what to, as the old brethren used to say, and refer to it to be a child of God. And then I'd like to see you keep that want to. Brothers and sisters, I hope you've still got a want to, and that you want to serve him, and that you want to do what that he wants you to do, and that you want to labor, even though it may seem bleak and dark all around us, although it's dark, although it's, uh, it seems so that nobody else is serving you, yet I'm going to praise you. Yeah. That ought to be the mind of every one of us here today. So if you're not a Christian, we'd love to see you come. If you're ready, come. If you want to pray, come. If you're ready for baptism, let us know. While they sing, church, you move as you feel led while they sing. Let us know. Chris, come out here with us. Christian, thinking about it, you want to be a Christian before you die, 
you like for these brothers and sisters to be praying for you? How many of our friends, while they sing, can just come down, shake me your brother Chris by the hand? Just by that move, you don't have to say a word. You're saying, pray for me, I'm lost. I need the prayers of God's Turn right around and go back to your seat. And I promise you, these brothers and sisters will be praying for you. Yeah. You've got to make a start somewhere. Well, it's one we'll full big. You turn right around and go right back. We don't believe in that. One or more, got that in mind. We'd love to see you move here today. You may have moved a hundred times. You may have never moved in your life. You may be a Christian that needs a little bit of encouragement or help. Nothing wrong with that. If you want us to pray for you, we'd love to see you move too. We all need to move up a little bit. While they sing, if there's one desire in prayer, come down and listen.
Came from up that way to come down and be with them. So we came, come back Friday night. We had an awful good time here this past Friday night. So visitor with us. So if you came, come back and be with us this Friday night. Any other announcements? Anything you need to say? Song, anything at all? If not, ask you to bow your heads, be dismissed here, we'll ask uh, Brother James if he will dismiss us from this service. Lord, our Heavenly Father, <coughs> we thank you, dear Master, for the blessings one more time that you've given us to be here. Thank you, Lord, for everyone we've shook hands with, talked to, spoke to. Thank you, dear Master, for the love that we feel from one from another. I thank you, Lord, for what these brethren have said here today. The praying, the preaching, the singing. Knowing, dear Lord, that it all comes from you. And we thank you. We can feel it in our hearts, and we thank you for that. I thank you, Lord, for everything that you've done for us. Spiritually, financially, naturally. Thank you, Lord, for all of them good gifts. Because you promised manifold blessings in this life. And I life everlasting in the world to come. And I thank you, dear Lord, for what the brethren has said. I pray, dear Lord, that this word goes out, as he said, it would not return to him void, but it'll go down in the hearts of them. And I pray, dear Lord, that it works a work, makes them so upset in their lives. <coughs> Helps them to understand, dear Lord, that time is short. And we've got to work to do. And this ain't something that I just say in my life, so I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. But I pray, dear Lord, you would give them the strength to move out. Take a hold of this before it's everlasting too late. Go with us through this life. Watch over our children, I pray. Help us, dear Lord, as we go through this life, that we could always look to you for leadership and guidance. Help us through our troubles and trials to be there with us. Pray, dear Master, when our time is done, that we meet you in peace. Through the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, I thank you. Amen. Amen. Amen.